Hi, this is Esan. Welcome to lab number two. The topic of lab number two is error and variability. This lab number two is about a game of coin throws where the students will create teams and each team member will be throwing or tossing coins or pennies at a target line and collect the distances to make a data data set and subsequently analyze this data to understand the concept of average constant error absolute error variability and standard deviation using Excel the first phase of this lab is to create a group of four to five people for my case I have a group of four people number one participant one number two participant two number three participant three and number four participant four so these are my four group members now the second phase is to select a target position with respect to our initial starting position in my case the starting position will be the zero on the centimeter scale which is placed on the very left of the scale as you can see here oops uh, so it's going to be here and our tar target position our team target position is 70 centimeters which will be here however as you can see that it's only seven centimeters that's written here so for our illustrative purposes we are going to blow up this scale by a factor of 10 so that 1 becomes 10 and 7 becomes 70 10 becomes 100 now say for instance I am participant number 1 and now I have to go and throw five pennies so say for instance I stand here take the penny and throw it and in my first case the penny landed on 104 which is here so say for instance is 104 which I will name D1 this is in centimeters now in my second instance or second throw I have made I've reached the position 62 say for instance which will be 62 here we don't have to be so precise just to give you the idea here so this is 62 centimeters and then the third position say for instance was 65 which would mean here so D3 is 65 centimeters and now the fourth position or my fourth throw landed on 67 which is so if this is 65 66 67 which is here which is my actually this is my D4 which is 67 centimeters and now the last throw that I made was 81 centimeters which is if this is 80 this is going to be 81 so d5 is 81 centimeters now that I have this data for participant number one I'll go to my Excel and create this data as you can see I've already created the other data but I'm just gonna show you the first data for me so here you can see the target position for our case which was 70 and my first 12 was 104 the second one being 62 third one 65 fourth one 67 and fifth one 81 now the first thing that we are going to do with this data is of course set them up in my Excel or save it in some of my notebooks the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to do the average and how we do this average manually I'm going to show you in the uh, in manually I'm going to show it to you manually here so the idea is 
the average for participant one, which is me, would be average is equal to the summation of all the trials that I've done. I've done five trials. So D1 plus D2 plus D3 plus D4 plus D5 divided by the total number of trials which was 5 in my case. Now here what I'm gonna do is 104 plus 62 plus 65 plus 67 plus 81 divided by 5 and the result you can do using a calculator however we are going to use Excel to do it. So how do we do it in Excel? We already have selected, uh, saved all the data here. So th in order for us to make the average manually, what, you, what we are going to do is we are going to use the sum factor, sum function, sum here means summation, and we are going to select what we want to sum over. So we take the mouse and we select all these things and we close the bracket so we're going to sum over all this so now we have the top part of this equation which is this part we have summed all over uh, all those things and now we want to divide it by 5 so 5 would be divided by 5 which gives us 75.8 so which gives us 75.8 this is centimeters. Now let's go back and see whether we can do it in a different or a little more efficient way. What we can do is we can use the function called average and we are going to make the average over all these five values, right? So we are just going to select all of them and the computer will understand we are averaging based on these values and the number of trials is five so it's going to directly compute the thing and give us the same result, which is 75.8. So now you know two different tools, two different ways of computing average using Excel. Now let's see what happens with this average. What you can see here is this average is 75.8 which means it will be somewhere here which is our average 75.8 centimeters and we can see how our trial throws are distributed with respect to this average some on the right some on the left now let's move on to the next idea which is constant error so for that, I'm going to s summarize all this information on the left side and also maybe fix the diagram. So in the next phase, you're going to see a completely different diagram. However, it represents the very same thing that we have talked about till now. So as I've promised, I have completely changed the diagram in a way which is a little more understandable. So yeah, I paused the video and changed all the settings thanks to technology I can do that so now you can see that the target position is here and the average of all the trials that participant one which was me made is here and you can see how all the trial th throws are distributed based on the target and at the same time my own average now in this part we are going to talk about the idea of constant error so constant error which is given as C uh, written as C the idea of constant error is it is the variation so this is the variation between the produced outcome produced outcome 
which are di where i starts from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for our case. So if it's 1, d becomes di becomes d1 and which is 104. If it's 2, in that case it's d2 which becomes 62. If it's 3, it becomes d3 and it's 65. And same if it's 4 in that case it's becomes it becomes d4 which is 67 and all these are in centimeters so it's as i said it's the variation between the produced outcome of our trials and um, outcomes of so it's the variation between the produced outcome compared to the required outcome compared um, compared to the required outcome which for our case is the target position which was target which is 70 is equal to 70 centimeters and you will see that constant error gives us a sense of direction so it gives us ce gives us a sense of direction so how are we going to compute this so i'm going to erase all these things that I've written now and I'm going to give you the example based on participant 1 so let's first erase all this okay let's do a little more here okay let's do this and since we are going to compute this, we are going to break in, bring it over here, take it a little up, or maybe we can just write it again. And we are taking out this start position, we don't need it anymore. Or, yeah, like this. So, so how are we going to compute? Oops, select the pen. Uh, this is basically, you can understand this is the first time I, I'm using my own personal bamboos mm, scratch pad or something and I'm not really sure how it works but I'm learning through the process. So the idea is how do you compute it? Computation of CE. So here similar to DI and D1, D2, D3 we are going to compute five different CEs for each different trial throws. So CE, let's small letter, is equal. The first throw was 104. So 104 was the outcome, and the target was 70. The other one, second one, is uh, 62 minus 70. Third one was CE3 is equal to uh, 65 minus 70. CE4 is equal to 67 minus 70. CE5 is equal to 81 minus 70. So if you want to compute all this manually, you can do it. So I'm going to do it manually, so it's going to be 34, and this is going to be minus 8, this is going to be minus 5, this is going to be minus 3, this is going to be 11. However, if you have a lot of data, you would want to do this using Excel. So let's go to Excel and see how we can do this. So we have already have the trial data, so the idea is to subtract 104 and uh, subtract 104 from 70 or 
yeah, I mean, 104 minus 70, that's what we want to do. As you can see, it's di minus dt. di is the individual trial throws, distance of the individual trial throws, and dt is the distance of the target. So this is going to be what you're going to do is you're going to write equal to select 104, you select minus, then you select 70. Now you put enter and you get 34. What you do now is this, select this part and drag this way. And you can see that it has done very same operation. So it has done 104 minus 70, 62 minus 70, 65 minus 70, and it has done the computation automatically and have given you the results. And now, if you remember correctly, this part was the average. So, okay, I will talk about it a little later. So this is the absolute, sorry, this is the constant error of the individual trials of participant one. Now we want to see what we want to compute is the average of the constant error. So we're going to compute the average of the constant errors, which is equal to all these constant errors, sum them up and divide by five because the number of trials was five. So it's plus C E two plus C E three plus C E four plus C E five. All this divided by number of trials. So if we sum them up, it's 35 plus minus eight plus minus five plus minus three plus 11 which is divided by five now since we don't we have ran out of space we're going to take all this out because we have already computed all these things we don't need them anymore i've taken them out and we're going to continue the computation from here to here so the result is let's select the pen so the result is 34 so as you know plus and minus 8 is actually minus 8 plus and minus 5 is minus 5 plus and minus 3 is minus 3 plus and plus plus 11 is 11 divided by 5 now what you can do is you can do all these things manually, but we are going to use the Excel. So in order to compute the average, what we do is we do the very same thing that we have done before, which is we say equal to sum plus all these sums, bracket close. We have a starting bracket here to start with before the sum, after the sum function. And then we divide it by the number of trials, which is 5. And we said enter and we find that the constant average constant error for participant one is 5.8 now for better visualization what we can do is we can save all the data's here to the right so average constant error for participant number one will be placed here how do we do that we is it we do the very same thing equal to we select 5.8 and we press enter so so we are summarizing all this information on the right and the d bar value which is the average score of participant one which is 75 we are going to place it here as well for summarization reasons so we are going to select equal to select the average and this becomes this now we have found the average we have found the constant error average constant error and what we do is 
we are going to go back to explain a little about average constant error. So if you remember correctly that the average constant errors was like C E1, C E2, C E3, C E4, C E5. The first one was 34, the second one was minus 8, minus 8, the third one was minus 5, the fourth one was minus 3, the fifth one was 11. And you can see they have different signs. So, and you can, you should kind of intuitively understand that this signs should mean something. For example, if you have 34, which is a positive, you can see it relates to the trial number D1. And D1 is kind of overshot that you have, so 34 means that you have overshot by 34 centimeters from the target. And minus eight means that you have undershot eight centimeters from the required target position. So you can do similar. So this is undershot. This is also undershot. However, D5 is 81 centimeters. So it's 11 centimeters overshot. I hope you understand, right? My handwriting is better than this. However, as you can understand, bamboo, it's not really working for me. Um, so let's mark all this important information. So uh, I'm going to select a different color, which is going to be green maybe. Yeah. So this is my average and it's doing something weird. So I'm going to fix it and change into pen and I go to green. Hopefully it's selected and it's not selected. Yep, it's selected. So, yes. So this is my green and still this is not working. I don't like it. Okay, so this is, now it should work. So this is green and this is my average of my trials. And my average constant error from Excel, we found it was 5.8, which is average constant error for participant one, which is me. Now you can see that my average of the constant error is 5.8. However, if you look closely here, this we had a minus here, we had a minus here, and we had a minus here. But, so we had a lot of undershot, still our average gave an overshot average overshot so the thing that you need to understand is although there was a lot of negatives that is undershot if you look at the average the constant error is still positive which means overshot so as I've said why is this the case it is because you have averaged out the individual informations Thus, the two throws of 104 and 81 centimeter, which was positive constant, which had positive constant error, have dominated the result of the average and thus taking the average a little more towards the positive side, meaning overshot, although there were three undershot uh, although there were three under shots. So based on this result of average constant error, uh, the command that you can make is that the participant overshot in general by 5.8 centimeters. So let us now move on to computing absolute errors for individual trials and also the absolute uh, sorry and also the average of the absolute 
errors for participant 1. However, before doing that, let's erase all this irrelevant information first. So yeah, let's select this, delete. Now let's do this. Let's skip the average, the computation of this. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, and this and this. Okay. Um. However, I don't remember to explaining that. Uh, D bar usually is represented with D with the bar on top of it. It usually in this area of mathematics would mean average. So I'm just trying to present information in a little mathematical using a little mathematical notations. Nothing, nothing fancy. So before going to absolute error, I think you remember from, I don't know, maybe high school or like elementary school that uh, there is a term in mathematics which is called absolute value. What happens is, say for instance, uh, shoot, okay. So say for instance you have a number which is uh, one. So if you put the absolute value symbol around it, the result would be one. However, if you had minus 2.8, and if you put the absolute value around it, it's still going to be a positive value of the same amount. So it's going to be 2.8. So it takes out the information of directionality if you consider all these numbers placed on a number line. However, the interesting, not so interesting, or maybe interesting thing is, if you have zero and you do the absolute, it still is zero. So let's, so now that we're done with the elementaries and the idea of absolute in mathematical sense, let's erase this information to give you a definition of absolute error. So let's delete this, deleted. So let's use a black pen this time, okay. So, what is an absolute error? Oh, pen. So, okay. So, let's define absolute error as a e. I'm not writing it down. So, it is the absolute in the mathematical sense. Absolute my handwriting. Um uh, variation between the produced outcome, which was all these DIs, as explained before, uh, when compared to the target or the required outcome to the required outcome which is the target at position 70 centimeter from zero for my group which it can be different for yours uh, so here absolute means that the difference between the produced outcome and the required outcome without the sense of directionality as opposed to the constant error where you had the sense of directionality however here the directionality is taken out by the absolute function or the absolute mathematical operator so let's take out this definition and show you the example how you would compute all these individual absolute errors representing all these different trial throws that you have made. So let's do that. First, let's erase all this definition. So so say for instance, I have to first select the pen first. So, um, okay. So absolute error 
for one is you use the absolute operator since you're using for one so this is our number one trial the operation is 104 minus 74 sorry it was 70 70 70 70 then for a e2 a e3 a e4 a e5 we have 62 minus 70 uh, 65 minus 70 um, where is number four number four is 67 here that's why I didn't see it so this is going to be 67 minus 70 and this is going to be number five is 81 minus 70 so the values is so what happens when you take the subtraction from 100 so this is 104 minus 70 is 34 you take the absolute value it still remains 34 62 minus 70 is minus 8 you take the absolute value it becomes 8 uh, 65 minus 70 is minus 5 you take the absolute value and it becomes minus sorry it becomes 5 then this is um, minus 3 absolute value is going to be 3 and then you have a5 which is 11 absolute value it becomes 11 now similarly you could have done you can compute the average of this absolute values by adding all this information and divide by the number of trials so the definition of average absolute error is a e1 plus a e2 plus a e3 plus a e4 plus a e5 uh, divide by number of trials now a e1 is 34 here so it's 34 plus a e2 is positive 8 here this is an equal sign not a minus so plus 8 then you have a3 which is positive 5 positive 5 then you have a4 which is positive 3 then you have a5 positive 11 you divide all this by 5 and we are going to compute all of them using Excel. And the answer, I'm going to write it over here. So let's go to Excel and see how we can do this automatically. Well, yeah, partially automatic. So absolute error and the operator for this is called ABS, which stands for absolute value. So the absolute value and your taking the difference of 104 minus 70 I think I'm my I'm grammatically wrong somewhere but anyways so this is the absolute error for trial number one and you can drag all this information similarly like before and you get the values for each trial so 62 minus 70 absolute value 65 minus 7 absolute value of 65 minus 70 absolute value of 67 minus 70 so when you drag this when you select it and drag it downwards like this it does that operation for you automatically and how would you compute the average of this you can do sum all of this divide by 5 however we are going to we decide to use the average operation operator which is also known as the average function which is just write equal to average bracket open select all of them manually using the mouse bracket close press enter and you have 12.2 and as we have done earlier we are going to summarize the information here so all this information is 12.2 sorry I'm not going to do this I'm gonna write equal to and select 
absolute error so average absolute error so it's 12.2 let's go back and see so this is going to be 12.2 all these information are in centimeters now you can understand that the absolute value changes all the error directional information or sorry the absolute operator takes out all the directional information that you have seen previously so it was minus eight however when you do the absolute it makes it positive and you lose all the sense of direction um, so as to summarize absolute value um, when you do absolute value operation the sense of direction is lost it only shows how far you are off the target for each throw so now I'm going to give you a very good hint this hint is about a question from lab 2 which has something to do with bias and the hint would be first I will delete all this information so let's delete all of them So, okay the hint is about a topic called where is my mouse just okay I hold I hold the pen upside down so okay the hint is about the idea of oh my pen bias bias is in the in this from the perspective of this lab would mean a sense of direction uh, a direction towards which you are biased so um, least bias would mean that whose throws are least affected by a certain direction and so that's all the hint that I'm going to give it to give to you so uh, from the information that you have computed here you're going to have to decide which of these operators provides you the information of bias and after computing for all participants you have to select who is the least bias based on all this information. Now going back to the actual blackboard or whiteboard whatever you call it um, based on the earlier results of average um, absolute error which was 12 let's see 12 it's 12.2 12 so so 12.2 the comment that you can make is uh, or regard yeah so you can say how far off you are in general or in average compared to your target position the higher this value the more error you are making and the lower if the if the value is lower it would mean that you have less error and which leads to more accuracy now let's move on to the next interesting topic of variability error and so let's clean up this screen a little bit select all of them delete take out this bias term delete and take out this one delete we don't need this for the time being so let's do this so in order to understand the bias term 
oh, sorry in order sorry in order to understand the variability error there are certain things that you need to understand from this graph which i'm going to describe one by one so the first thing you if you remember when i talked about when i made all this trials and positioned them in the screen i told you if this is the average how your trials have been distributed as compared to this average now variability error is going to give you a measure of how your trials are distributed compared to your average so for better understanding i'm going to take out this target uh, position that we had because now variability error has to do with your average and your trials so let's select this target and take this out and we're going to select this one and take this out so now you can see that this is your apps this is your um, average position which I'm recoloring if that is a word now you can see that this is a distance uh, this the distance between your d1 and your d bar is sorry I have to select a pencil and then I'm going to show it to you and see whether it's let's create black so yes it's pencil okay so you can understand the distance of your individual scores from your average score would be denoted by di is minus d bar which is the distance of your individual scores from your average score that you can understand from the notation so it's called the distance of your individual scores from your average in my case it's my average so this is the distance which in this image means this distance or this distance or this distance or this distance or this distance all these five dis distances say for instance we say that these are say for instance um, okay let's not call them by any names but this is the distance of your individual scores from your average that you can understand now you what you actually care is how much you have varied and you don't actually care about in what which direction you have varied if you look at this carefully if you take this distances you're going to end up with some positive value because some of them are overshooting some of them are undershooting based on your d bar however when you want the variation of your throws with respect to your D average thrown position, you don't actually care about the direction. You only care about how far they're off from your average position. So what here, instead of doing the absolute value, researchers have decided to do a square value. So when you take the square of something, if you remember if you take minus 2 square it becomes 4 although the value becomes very large however the sense of direction is lost so you don't have any minus here it becomes a plus so this happens with this case as well so if you take the square of the variation of your individual throws individual throws from your average throws 
you take out the information of individual directional variation you only have a sense of variation as to how far they are off from from your average position so let's compute this squared deviation or squared variation from the average for each of the trials that we had so say for instance we name this different square of the difference say for instance difference one for trial number one which is 104 and the average 75.8 so it's going to be 104 minus 75.8 whole square and then diff number two is um, 62 minus 75.8 whole square diff number three is going to be 65 minus 75.8 whole square diff number four is going to be um, 67 minus 75.8 whole square and diff number five is going to be 75 point sorry diff number five is going to be 81 minus 75.8 whole square and if you compute the results it's going to be uh, 795.94 we i've done this before so i have their solutions however we're going to show how you can do this in excel and you don't have to worry about it the second one is going to be 190 point something then the third one is going to be 116 point something the fourth one is going to be 77 point something the fifth one is going to be something uh, 27 point something which is 0 4 so what we can now if you look at these numbers these are huge numbers and they don't make any sense unless you actually actually somebody told you that it was the deviation it, it was the deviation of your individual trials from your average squared but bear with me for another one or two minutes and you will understand how variation is related to this and also how this leads to the definition of standard deviation so let's in order to compute all this let's go to excel and do this computation so let's going to we're going to excel now so we have all these things here and we want to compute this so di your individual trials minus your your own average squared so how you can do that is simple what you can do is you can select you can copy all this copy this information of 75.8 here and repeat it for five times so what you can do is you can just say 75.8 uh, or what you can do is you can just write equal to and select this and say enter and now what you can do is you can fix this value so you click this you press F2 and if you put a dollar sign in front of D and D in that case this segment of Excel has been fixed and so you so fixed you will understand the idea so if you pre press enter and you drag all this information down you see that all this information has been copied into this new segments however if you want you can do this or you can keep this blank uh, and you can only keep this segment but we are going to keep this and we are going to show you two different tricks of computing this using one without using the dollar sign one using the dollar sign so the first one without dollar so what you can do is you can select this so you select this part to compute the squared variation and you press equal to sign and first you select 
first you create a bracket you select your trial distance which is 104 minus your average and you can you use the where is this uh, shift 6 operator to bring out this exponential sign or the power sign and you put 2 and you press enter and you get 795 and so it was 104 minus 75.8 whole squared you get 795 and if you drag this down you get the same thing you get this however now we are going to show you with the dollar sign and you will see that they are very same results what I can do what I'll do I'll delete all this and now with the dollar sign I'm gonna show you the results what I mean by the dollar sign is simple dollar is a way to fix a certain part so since we are always taking the minus with respect to subtracting from 75.8 and if you uh, want to keep that 75.8 fixed for your computation while you drag this down in that case you use the dollar sign to fix this location what do I mean by that so let's put equal sign and let's put the open bracket select 104 minus select 75.8 now if you want to make this fixed we're going to use this and surround the G with two dollar signs close the bracket put the power sign put two and the power sign in my keyboard is shift six uh, so you put enter and you see it gives you the same value now if you drag this down it gives you the same value as before however what it does is it does not go one by one and make this computation it goes 104 minus 75.8 whole square 62 minus 75.8 whole square 65 minus 75.8 whole square 67 minus 75.8 whole square and same for 81 if you want to look at this you can check click this and press F2 and you can if you select D4 you see this is selected 62 and if you select this you can see this is selected so you can understand how is it how the mechanics works now as I said we are only one minute away to understand variation so let's go back and see how we can relate this information to variation as I've said earlier here that this di minus d square is a square of the variation of your trials from your average uh, trials and so if you take the av if you add all this information up and divide by 5 what I mean is this so let's select this delete let's select this like that delete delete and delete so what I mean is um, say for instance we want to compute average of our so we want to compute the average of the squared variation or the deviation from our own average so this is going to be um, so some kind of average diff which is DIF1 plus DIF2 plus DIF3 plus DIF4 DIF5 divided by the number of trials so when you do this it gives you the average squared deviation from your own average and for our case it's going to be 795 plus 0.94 plus something 190 something 
plus 116 something plus uh, 77.4 something then we have plus 27.4 something and when we and we divided by 5 because our number of trials was 5 for a certain person so this is the average of the squared variation so this still does not make sense because these values are huge and if you understand these are beyond the scale it's like 700 somewhere it doesn't make any sense however what if you take the square root of this answer so what happens if you take the square root of this answer so answer meaning if you compute this and if you take the square root this is the answer and if you find this answer and put it here and take the square root of that you will see that it gives you the variable error and you can understand from this that you're basically squaring the information to take out the directionality factor and then you are averaging all this individual squared deviation in order to get an average sense of squared variation from your average and then when you get this average in averaged squared variation and you take the square root you get the kind of average variation error does this make sense i hope it does so for our case this answer is going to be so let's select a different color which is black so this answer for our case was 241.36 and when you take the square root of 241.36 you get 15.53 which means okay in order to make you understand that section I have to remove all this uh, things so let's first delete all this however I hope you understand up till this part because if you understand up till this part the rest is easy so uh, okay so this one this one delete 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 and i'm sorry i'm saying delete too many times i guess i have already have made a huge video for you guys but in the last semester a lot of students have trouble understanding this and so I decided that I'm gonna I should make something a little more robust so that everyone can understand okay so this is our average squared variation and what it means is on average all your individual trials are 15 centimeters off in whatever direction from your d average that is the sense of um, variation error and that's how you would compute it so let's go to excel and finish this variation error thing so the idea is what we do is so you have done the Squared variation of each trials each of your trial throws with respect to your average trial score and now you need to take the average so we do average over all of this and we get 241 and if you want you can see that it's consistent 241.36 something and when you want to take the square root what you do is you just say sqrt and you select this part and you put enter and you get the square root now just to, before i finish off i want to talk about so yeah before we finish off i want to talk about standard deviation and standard deviation is basically the very same thing however you remember that i've talked about very um the average variation or average some I've said some name I don't remember what uh, average variation I guess 
variation was DIF plus DIF2 plus DIF3 plus DIF4 plus DIF5 divided by number of trials and then we took this average made the square root of this average variation and we named it V so variation error however if you would have done something different like the same top thing divided so same top thing meaning this doesn't change this goes here however here you are using trials number of trials minus one so in our case it would mean five minus one then and you take this result so you take this average result which is a little different from the average that you have computed before and you take the square root of that this is called standard deviation the reason why they have used this minus one is um, based on a statistical purpose of removing some bias this bias is some other bias that you don't need to understand for the timing and for simplicity just for the sake of information I'm just giving you this information and this has nothing to do with your lab so this is called standard deviation and the way you can compute it is simple so here where so this is Excel so I'm gonna compute the standard deviation um, so take out the dollar sign and standard deviation would be here so the idea is sum all of these divided by not 5 but 5 minus 1 and so this is your average new average your earlier average was 3 241 but because you're reducing the denominator your value is increasing so it's 301 now what you do is you press F2 again and you put a bracket around the whole thing and you use SQRT to make the square root and you press enter and you see this is the standard deviation which is a little higher than the variation error term term but they are very similar and they give an idea of the very same thing however mathematicians use standard deviation and people in kinesiology or biology can use this to define variation however they are very similar concepts however since this is not part of this lab I'm gonna erase this I just wanted to give you an information and that's it so now that I've shown you how to compute average absolute error variation error mm, constant error and standard deviation I I'm certain you're you'll be able to compute um, the answer one and two however um, I would give you a hint for one of the answers now which is has to do with some bias uh, the least bias idea and so I'm removing all this information uh, I don't even need this oh no I don't I need this game so yeah so when you compute the least oh, that's it. so when you compute the least bias you have to be careful and you have to remember the basics of number line theory uh, something that you have done in high school or somewhere else so say for instance um, say this is your uh, number line actually we didn't need the scale so anyways this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 and maybe this is minus 1 this is minus 2 so um, what you need to understand is you have a point over here and so the difference between this and this is uh, say for instance this point is minus 1.5 so this difference is 
minus 1.5 minus 0 which would mean is equal to minus 1.5 and now you have another point which is like here um, 1 so this difference would be 1 minus 0 which will be 1 and here the smallest difference or uh, so one second so this thing is closer right to your target if you consider your target to be zero whereas this is higher because the distance is 1.5 although the value is negative say for instance to give you another example so so this is 0 1 2 so if you have a point here and you compute the distance which is 0 minus 1 is sorry 1 minus 0 is equal to 1 and you have another point which is minus 0 0.8 and you compute this difference it's minus 0 0.8 minus uh, 0 which is minus 0 0.8 this distance is smaller and this distance is higher so that's the idea that you have to think about when you answer least bias. Uh, if I would have, I would, have, if I would tell you in that case, there is no point of you doing the lab, so I won't give you the exact answer. Um, but you can consult with me all, always. So the last thing what I want you to do is, so you have to do all these things, all the things that you have done here for basically since I'm talking about my group I have to do all these things for my group so I have to do it the same operations for my participant number two participant number three and participant number four and then in order to answer the group question I have to um, get all this information in a separate Excel file so what I mean is like this so go to lab number two yeah I've done all this here for you guys so this was the individual one that I've shown and this is the group one. So what you do is you have your target position here, which is 70 for the entire group and you have all the 20 trials that your individual group has made. However, you have all ch now have chunked all this information in one as a group data. So you have collected all this information. You have collected this average. You computed this D bar for the entire group. You have computed the C individual CEs for the each each of the, for each trials, um, the absolute errors for each trials. You have computed the deviation uh, of each trial, square deviation of each trials from your average group average. You have taken the sum, you have taken the square root, and you have found the VE, AE, AEE, -E, and G bar. What I would say is, if when you understand this, you have all this data here shown. Uh, create a similar table and try to see whether your understanding works and check this with my data and then when you operate your ideas on your data you can be certain that you have done the right thing and then um, so regarding question number four where uh, you are supposed to uh, give us an idea of how you would like to measure the outcomes of curling this is something that you have to do on your own and um, you have to explain to us in a way which is reasonable why you would not only use a e v e and c e and what are the disadvantages of the error score assuming you have chosen an error score scheme you have to talk about the disadvantages of that scheme uh, let's see um, and now so we have talked about question number four where you're going to give us a solution to measure the performance of the game called curling talk about the disadvantages disadvantages of a e v e c e i mean i'm not giving you the exact question i mean the question you can find in the pdf handout however regarding now so you get the idea uh, regarding question number three um, you're going to give us uh, 
so the question is in your group sorry the question number three is what do the measurement criteria you used tell you about how the outcomes were produced so the idea is does this data tell you about how the outcomes were produced like whether it talks about the uh, process measure or whether the data that you see talks anything about how the process of acquiring this data was whether we had any data related to the process of how we created movements to create this data and maybe um, you can give us a technique of how we can measure uh, the process by which we have made this maybe for example we can use fmri scans to see how our brain is changing while we're doing this we can take e e g data which is really if i'm not mistaken electron cephalogram which is related to placing electrodes in your head to see uh, electrical activities in your brain while you do these things or you can use maybe biomotion capture systems um, um, or maybe you can use EMG which is which has to do with muscle data that electrical data relating to your muscles as you do this or maybe you can use a combination of all these things at the same time and figure out a way how this thing is done so whatever measure you're going to choose please do a kind of a wikipedia search or not wikipedia okay do an internet search to figure out uh what kind of measures you would like to use and explain the process uh, so that would be it for the time being i hope i see you in class and you do amazing in this lab um thank you bye